the feast of and solemnity of the most sacred heart of Jesus falls on the third Friday after the Pentecost, the feast of the Pentecost. And uh, today is that Friday. So happened today is June 24, and there's also a big feast of the church. The birthday of the precursor of Christ, the birthday of St. John the Baptist. So we have these two occasions in the church. But then, when it comes to liturgical celebration, of course, the Christological devotion is our takes precedence over the devotion to the saints. And this is the reason why the church will give emphasis on the solemnity of the most sacred heart of Jesus that we are celebrating and uh, the feast of St. John, the, the, or the birth of St. John, the Baptist, will be moved tomorrow. But we continue to reflect on the will of God, the history of our salvation, reflecting on these two feasts. And uh, today, we are made to reflect on one of the most uh, celebrated devotional activities of the church. In fact, uh, if we have this Friday, Friday devotion or first Friday devotion, and sometimes some people have this Friday devotion, it is because of our devotion to the most sacred heart of Jesus. And this is true in many parts of the world. This is very true in Catholicism. Why the heart? What is in the heart? Why not the brain? Why not the kidney or the liver or any part of the body? Why is it that we focus on the heart? Anatomically, physiologically, even in empirical science, we say that the heart is the center of our being. If the heart beat stops, the doctor would say the person is medically dead. In Latin, the heart is, is termed cordis, cor cordis. That's why we have the word core or the center, C-O-R-E. Uh, that comes from the word cordis. And it means the, centra the centrality of our being is there in the heart. So the sacred scriptures would use this word heart, core, cordis, in order to, for us to reflect on the centrality of our life in relation with God. It's not just an ordinary heart. When we say the sacred heart of Jesus, the heart of Jesus, there's a human heart, just like our heart. But the heart of Jesus is not just human, it is also divine. So that the heart of Jesus is the heart of God. Christ's heart is God's heart. And the, as Christians, our heart should be patterned, should be configured after the heart of our Lord Jesus, which is the heart of God. So that when we touch people with our heart, it's not just touching them with our human heart. We touch them with a divine heart. And when you say heart, there is the thing that we never miss to say, love. Heart and love. Our heart has that object. We call this heart the wheel. And the object of the will is something good. Whatever is good, that is the object of our love. That, that's why you love your husband, you love your wife, you love your kids. Or we love to eat, we love to do these things. Above all, we say we love God, who is the highest good. Because the source of all goodness is God. When we love, we just... We do not love ordinarily. We are Christians, and the love that we have is more than an ordinary love. 
there is the supernatural dimension of that love. That's why we call Christian love charity. Charity has that kind of sacrificial love. The love of Jesus for us to the point of losing his life, sacrificing himself on the cross because of his love for us. And this is precisely the heart of Jesus, the most sacred heart of Jesus that we are imitating. That's why we always, we are always reminded every Friday that we come to church, our Lord Jesus would tell us, learn from me for I am meek and humble of heart. The meekness, the humility, the obedience to the will of God. So that uh, we have to understand that that is the heart of Jesus that we have to configure. That heart which is compassionate, more generous, more dedicated, so that if we have we learn this heart from the heart of Jesus, we will be insensitive, we will never be insensitive to other people's pain and sorrows. We can be more charitable to others. So today's fish, we ask the Lord to give us a good heart, configured after his heart, capable of compassion for other people's pain, because only with such heart can we realize that the true balm for the suffering and anguish of this world is love. If people of all principles, races, culture, would learn the love of Jesus, there should be no war. There should always be peace. So that we must, our love must be clothed with understanding, with dedication, with affection, and voluntary humility. Today, we ask the Lord to bless us, to guide us, as Jesus would always tell us about his commandment, the commandment of love, to love God with all our heart and to, to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. So let us call on the Lord to help us that we may be guided as we are inspired today to show to others that compassion, that love which Jesus has in our heart.